Okay, sorry about that. Um, because uh, I'm I'm using Zoom to take this video, so uh, it's after forty five minutes. I cannot use again. So let's continue our lesson. We have dx over dy is equal to dx over du times du over dy. First of all, look at the function map for part B. You will see that for cosine two y, you will notice that this time we will do the two y first and then do the cosine. So that means we can use this chain rule again. This time we have D will let U be 2Y. And then we can have a formula. That one is that D for cosine u over du times d2y over dy. In case you can remember the formula that we have teach you in the section um, 12.11 also, but uh, I want to show you that you can use the chain rule, then you can directly remember, only you, you are required to directly remember something that with the derivative of cosine is much better for you to do the answer for the question. After that, four can be put in anywhere. And then for the derivative of cosine u, that will be negative psi u because we have the formula with the derivative dx, which is of the cosine x, which is equal to negative psi x. For four, they're the same. And then with the derivative of two y, you know that this one is two. So this one is negative a psi u. So that means negative x psi two y. So this is the answer of part b. Okay, after that, we plug in the answer of the point Q, and then we will find out that. Okay, let me erase something here. Okay, now we plug in something for the part B. That will be dy over dx is obviously equal to 1 over negative a psi 2y. And we plug in the coordinate of Q, that is 2 pi over 6 here. So we get negative 1 a psi 2 times pi over 6. So this time is negative 1 over a times square root 3 over 2. So this one is negative 1 over 4 square root 3. So this is the part B. And for part C, you're going to find the equation of the normal also. And Another way that you need to do is that you need to find out the um, intercept. And when given your uniform, your answer in the form of ax plus b y plus equal to zero. So please pause now to make sure that you have copied down and you know what you have learned in the part A and part B. And so that I will erase them all and go to part C. Okay, now we will go to the part C of it. Okay, let me just copy one of it. I don't want this one. Okay, let me erase something, everything for it. Okay, for part C. For part C, we are going to find out that the, the equation of normal. This time, you know that we have the gradient of the tangent at Q. is equal to negative one over four square root three. So we know that the gradient of the normal is just because they are perpendicular, so that you know that this one will be the negative reciprocal. So the gradient of normal at Q is just four square root three. So we have this one for part B. After we're doing that, we will go to 
find the equation of normal. Because we know that, once again, we can use y is equal to mx plus z again. For y, you know that the point is pi over 6. For x, you know the answer of this one is 2. For m, the answer of this one is 4 over 3. the slope of the gradient of the normal is 4 root 3. So after that, we know that the C is equal to pi over 6 minus 8 square root 3. So we can rewrite the form, the equation of normal is equal to y is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, let's remove it again. That is, slope is 4 square root 3x plus apply over 6 minus x root 3. To make it as a general form, first of all, I will times the 6 for the whole equation. That means I will have 6y equals to 6 times 4 square root 3, that is 24 root 3x plus pi, because times 6, so that we do not have 6 again, and minus x times 6 is 40x square root 3. And then we can reform it. So we get the answer is 24 square root 3 minus 6y plus pi minus 40x square root 3 equal to 0. So this is the form of ax plus b1 plus c, where a, I'm sorry, I did not write the x here. a is 24 square root 3 b is a negative 6, and c is pi minus 48 square root 3. So you will get the answer of question 10. Okay, now you can pause the video to make sure that you got all the part a, part b, and part c. Okay, after that, we will have product rule. So, when you return to this video, we will have the product rule now. Okay, we go to the product rule. Okay, this one is the product rule. When y is the u times 3, for example, what can we have? The product rule y is equal to x squared times psi x. Because we know that, we know how to do the derivative of x squared. I can transform it to a u. And also, we know that how to do sine x. So we know that this one is a transform it to v so that we can use the product rule. Another example that we can have is y is equal to x plus 1 squared times x minus 3. And another one is that this one. Because for x plus 1, we know that we can do the derivative by this one. This is just x squared plus 2x plus 1. And other one, we know that how to do the derivative for x minus 3. So both of them, we can use the product rule to do it. But you will ask, can you can expand it all to do it? Yes, most of the time you can expand it. But you will find that sometimes if you expand it, when I want you to find out the gradient is equal to zero, suddenly you will think, ah, oh, after that I need to do the factorization again. Yes, sometimes. But if you can try to do it by the product rule, sometimes you will find that, ah, oh, some of them you are not required to do the factorization. For example, for this one, x plus one may be kept here. So therefore, different case, you can do the, take out the factorization of x plus one. 
So that that would be one of the factor. And after that, you thought, ah, it's quite easy for you to do it. Okay, this one is the dy dx equals to u dv over dx one plus v du. Okay. Later, I will tell you how to do the first principle of it because today I did not run out of time. So next time I will show you how I can do the first principle with you all and why product will work. In case for you to use the product rule y is equal to uv, you can use that. The equation is that dy dx is equal to u dv over dx plus re du over dx. So how does it work and how can we work now? We will do some example for you to make sure that you get it and then you can solve your answer easily. Now, look at it. We decide we have fx is equal to x squared with square root three x minus one. Okay, let's look at it one by one. First of all, number one, in this, in this function, we see two part of it. We know how to do the derivative of x squared. dx squared over dx is equal to 2x. We know. This is the first part of it. The second part of it. Oh, maybe I use another color. The second part of it. We know how to do the derivative of square root 3x minus 1. It is because we have derivative of dx, 3x minus 1, with the power half. This one is equal to half. We can use the chain rule most of the time. So this time, I let u to the 3x minus 1. So d, d, u. OK, maybe I write clearly. Let u is equal to 3x minus 1. So that we have d 3x minus 1, 1 half, over dx is equal to d 3x minus 1 with the power half, du times du over dx. So we transform it to d u with a power half over du times d 3x minus 1 over dx. So we can see this is 1 over 2 u with the power negative half times 3. Because you have the derivative of 3x is 3, but the derivative of negative 1 is 0. So you will see the answer of this one is 3 over 2 times 3x minus 1 with the power negative 1 half. So in case, we can split it into two and we can do two derivatives. So why don't we use the product rule? Number one, for the product rule, let me break it down to u and v. Let u is equal to x squared. And v is equal to square root 3x minus 1. And then what can we do now is that we will use the product rule. That is the d dx uv, which is equal to u d v plus v d u. That means u is x squared. Okay, we change it one by one. First of all, u is equal to x squared. I use another color that would be yellow. U is equal to x squared. So I change this u to x squared. So that's part of it. dv dx, which means I'm going to find the derivative of square root 3x minus 1. So that is the answer of the blue part of it. And then we change it to 3 over 2. 3x minus 1 with the negative 1 over 2. 
and then we is equal to square root three x minus one. So what can we do is that we change it to square root three x minus one. And finally, we will times the last one is that the du over dx, which is the red what we I what I write. I will have written in red that is the answer to 2x. So let me rewrite form that will be 3x squared over 2 times 3x minus 1, negative 1 over 2, plus 2x square root 3x minus 1. Can we do the further cancellation and simplify the answer? I can show you this one can. What can we do? First of all, um, we need to do is that we will change back the index of negative half to square root. So this is 3x squared over 2 times root 3x minus 1. Because this one is the square root. Okay, plus. 2x times square root 3x minus 1. What is the next is that we will do the factorization. What can I do is that we will take out something that we will take out x and also 2 with the square root 3x minus 1. The whole denominator in the first one. And we see that both terms, we can see x here. So I also take out the factorize of x. So what do we left is that because we choose this one x square from it, if you choose two, we choose three, square root three x minus one. So the only thing left is three x. And for this one, for the second part of it, you will see that I take out half of it. So that means we will double two to four. Because 4 over 2, we get back 2. And after 2, we take out the factorization of x. You will see this time is square root 3x minus 1. We'll have 2 of it. So we need to square it. So this is 4 times 3x minus 1. And after that, we can do the simplification. The answer of this one is x times... 3x plus 12x, that is 15x minus 4 over 2 square root 3x minus 1. So this is the answer of the product rule. Okay, I think that I must be in here to make sure that you get all the correct answer. So make sure that you know how to do it. If possible, please try to do some question later for the product rule. Okay, that's all today. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.